How's it going, Internet? I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's that time again. It's time to get animating. It's time to get creative. It's time to get those imaginative juices flowing. It's time to get inspired. And today's inspiration comes from, I'm going to probably say this wrong, so bear with me here. Uh, it is Rian Portlivit. Uh, and if you're not familiar with his work, he's a Dutch illustrator. He did all those amazing um, gnomes books that were uh, around and usually you'll see them kind of pop up they're really popular around Christmas time but he was a, a phenomenal um, wildlife illustrator and he did tons and tons of um, amazing illustrations uh, there isn't a ton of uh, quotes or interviews with him but I did find uh, one uh, video interview he did and I found a little snippet in there that I wanted to share with you guys and that's I never do a painting over again for a second time and I think that's great just to, to continue and move on to not uh, worry about trying to reiterate and perfect the past and everything, but have a painting stand for what it is, or your illustration or whatever creative thing it is, uh, have it stand for where you were at at that time, what your life was like, where you were doing during that time. And uh, I got a couple of uh, little illustrations over here that I want to share with you guys as well that are from him. He's just got a phenomenal uh, use of anatomy and great painting skills, a really uh, light watercolor feel to all of his stuff. And another thing that's really nice about um, his work that I find um, resonates with myself well is that um, I like to have illustrations kind of stand on their own and not always have to have like a uh, narrative with it, but just let, uh, you know, like, like right here, just uh, this page to me is, is great and it doesn't necessarily have like and here is the boar and these are his feet and this is like it's just more in-depth study of it but also done in a, in a very artistic fashion as well and just such a great uh, mastery of the uh, of the object as well and um, I think it gives that kind of feel of like that you're you're gazing through someone's private sketchbooks, but I think that's uh, a great thing uh, for myself. At least I really enjoy uh, a lot of that stuff. Um, today's video is going to be a little bit different than usual. Um, oh, and I wanted to share one thing before I go into that. Uh, he told this story about how um, he he does a lot of wildlife stuff, but he's also a hunter himself. So. Uh, he, he hunted uh, this giant boar and then he took the, the um, you know the meat home but uh, kept the body intact so he could study it and, and really try and get uh, you know have a 3d model of an actual boar and he left it in his studio by where he was painting and he used his reference so much and really studied and really got into it so much that uh, I think my headphones on um, that he he went to church the, that next week and uh, found that there were like giant ticks from the dead boar carcass that he was studying in his hair. And I think that kind of commitment to your to your craft so much that you're getting ticks off of a dead carcass in order to study and really know it so well is just a great example of really just focusing, honing in, and really mastering your craft and committing to it. And I thought that was a great little uh, example of that. And that being said, uh, we're going to be using the groggy rig. Um, we are doing a little bit of uh, a different approach uh, for this shot. A couple of people said uh, had some positive feedback on uh, the lip, lip sync stuff we did a couple, uh, what was it, a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, so I wanted to try that again. This rig is going to be a little more restrictive in the mouth movements. And we're probably not going to get as many controllers as the Malcolm rig. But like I said, I like to um, try out different rigs and bring different rigs for you guys to mess around with as well. Um, so that being said, I don't have the audio clip queued up in the file yet because I wanted to approach this shot a little bit differently and for a couple different ways, and I'll share those with you as well because I try to be very transparent with everything so we can work on this together. You guys can learn and you can kind of see the process and everything. <coughs> so I found a clip that I liked a couple days ago and it was kind of mulling it around in my head because um, that's one of the keys that you want to find if you're doing acting shots, especially um, if you're doing stuff... Uh, you know, like is student work or stuff for your reel that isn't necessarily inside of a studio. Um, you want to find something that's got a lot of character behind it, something that you can kind of build your shot around. And I found this great little stand-up clip that I wanted to use, and I thought it had pretty good timing and everything in it as well. But it's going to take a little bit of longer trimming and, and getting it uh, polished out. So I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll just wait to shoot my video till I get that done. <coughs> but I thought it would be a fun approach to try and do a lip sync or acting shot 
without the audio file uh, to start off with and then we'll add that in later so that we can really focus on the anatomy on the movement of the character and getting um, the posing really nailed down and then for the second portion we'll go in and we'll throw the lip sync and uh, get the timing right and nailed down once we have the uh, audio clip there so that being said we are using Maya uh, 2010 which is uh, one of my favorite versions if I haven't mentioned that it's just real lightweight real easy to use let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives uh, cube here like I said we are using the groggy rig it's a free rig that you can grab over at creative crash and I will link to that in the information below along with um, a copy of that gnomes book that I think is really great his illustration stuff is just phenomenal I'm sorry if I seem a little bit off today I've been having some audio problems and it was just taking a little bit longer to get this video um, up and running so I hope the audio continues uh, and doesn't bug out on me today so bear with me folks and I appreciate uh, all of the likes and subscribes everybody and now let's start uh, nailing in this first initial pose we want to do with this guy I think I want to have him kind of be a little pigeon toed, so I want to bring his feet inward a little bit, kind of make him a little bit shy, give him some bad posture here. So let's uh, rotate the chest in. Let's see. Do the belly and the chest together. to um, let's pull these arms in, rotate Y. So kind of the, the beats of the shot that I'm playing out in my head is this kind of thing is um, he'll be talking directly into the mic and then kind of look up and look over a little bit, kind of unsure um, as he tells uh, a little joke. So that's kind of, it's just a two beat, it's a quick shot, it should be, I think it's only around four or five seconds, so it's pretty short. Uh, again, a little bit longer than we usually do with um, this series, but the lip sync ones, I mean, we're, we're doing more of an acting shot, so we want to get a couple of beats in there um, to work with. So those are going to be a little bit longer. So we could just rotate the neck down a little bit more. I want to get a nice like hunch feel to this character. Let's kind of give him a little bit of a overbite here. Let's bring it down. Just kind of want to nail in as much as we can before we get the audio to work with. shoulders let's do the shrug and bring them in a little bit more there and then we can kind of bring these out a little bit more and rotate that up a little bit more rotate that up a little bit more let's go ahead and save our file here real quick file Save scene as, and it'll just take a second here to load that up, and we'll just call it uh, Groggy uh, Lips Part One. And let's go ahead and save that. Remember to save multiple versions and to save often when you're working as well. Let's see. if there's a way to lock in the eyes so we can keep them uh, apparent 
connected to the head movements. I don't worry too much about that yet. And then before I go too much further, let's go ahead and uh, create a polygon primitive. Let's create a uh, sphere here. And we'll zero that out, zero that out. And then let's go ahead and create a polygon primitives. Let's do a cylinder. I'm just going to make a little microphone here. Let's go ahead and grab, uh, switch it to we want edges, and we'll scale that in a little bit. Kind of filled up the, uh, switch back to object mode, blow it up, let's go ahead and stretch that out. Switch over here to polygons, go to edit mesh, insert edge loop tool. And we want to just pop one of those there. Switch back to object mode. And let's go to faces. Go ahead and raise that up. Pull that in a little bit more. Pull that in. here would be that microphone. And let's go to uh, and let's go back to uh, edges. Switch to uh, vertices. And we'll go ahead and work that a little bit more. And let's go back to object mode. Grab this guy. Let's scale that in. Scale it up a little bit more. Okay, go back to faces. Let's go back to object mode and let's rotate it around X. Zero that. Oh, put it at 90 degrees or 180 degrees. There we go. Shift microphone. I think we want to make this middle section a little bit bigger. So let's go into faces here. And actually, select all of those and we'll pull them down a little bit. Get a little bit of a longer kind of stem there. And then we're just going to scale this back just a little bit. Make it just a little bit longer. And shrink that up just a little bit. Let's go into here and let's grab uh, edges. Let's go ahead and scale that out just a little bit. Oh, uh, no, what we wouldn't want to do is do. Um, let's grab just those two. And, oh. Well, shoot. Sugar pie. I want to just grab that one edge loop around the middle. See if we did a good job of grabbing it. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go to Edit Mesh and Extrude. And we'll just make it a little. Oh, you know what? No, let's go to uh, let's switch to Faces. Edit Mesh, Extrude. Nope. Okay. 
Switch back to faces. your edge loop tool let's do a couple little of those we'll kind of do the same idea here so we'll go back to object mode now we'll go faces and we'll grab those we'll just shrink it in a little bit more and stretch that out a little bit stretch both of them out Just trying to define that shape of that microphone a little bit more. And yeah, let's go ahead and grab that. We'll do again edit mesh extrude, hit R, we'll scale it up a little bit. We'll raise that up just a little bit. Just so we get like a little bit of a kind of a bevel in there. And edit mesh extrude. So it's got kind of a real basic microphone shape. Switch back to object mode. And we'll go ahead and uh, assign a new material here. Let's go ahead and assign a uh, Lambert to what we have. And let's give it a lighter color here. And go ahead and grab this guy and assign a new material. Lambert here and color. Let's go ahead and make that a little bit darker. Alright, that will feel kind of microphony. And then we want to go ahead and parent those together. So when we move that, they'll both. So what we did was just grab the top and shift select the bottom and hit P to parent those together. Okay, we got ourselves a little microphone to work with. Let's go ahead and save our file again. And it's important to get a prop you're using one set up here and we make it about the right size pretty close and then before we go any further let's go ahead and uh, create a locator we'll get the locator up here and then we'll grab this guy window outliner grab the cylinder here and we'll control control click the uh, locator go ahead and parent that to it then we'll grab the locator and the wrist and we'll parent those together so that if we did that right I should do that but before we go a little any further let's grab that locator you know what we want to make sure that we're actually Putting the locator right in the center of that mic. Probably scale it in a little bit more. Doesn't have to be exact, but pretty close. Okay, now let's uh, grab the cylinder here and the outliner. Control click the locator, parent those together. And now we can just use the locator to move the microphone. And then we want to really get the microphone set up in that hand here. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of a better hand pose here before we start parenting everything down together. Okay, now let's go to we'll the locator and uh, control shift click the wrist here. Go ahead and parent those together. And now when we remove the wrist, we should be able to move the microphone. But since we did a locator on there, um, we can still go in and readjust if we need to adjust the microphone positioning after we nailed in the hand poses here. Okay, now let's go ahead and grab these uh, 
fingers here. Middle base, ring base. Just want to get a good starting pose here. Let's do a little bit of mid here. This means we'll have to bring the pinky out a little more. And where's that thumb? I'll spread that. Get uh, that hand set up here. Now we have like the one hand kind of laying on the other, so hopefully we can make some kind of a better, in, more interesting hand pose here. And by giving, I've talked about this before, but the nice thing about giving us a prop versus what we had in the last one is it'll make all our acting choices a lot more interesting. Uh, I talked about this before, the uh, Mike Gassaway's, uh, who's an amazing animator, is uh, hold the coffee cup acting. And that tip was, uh, if you don't want to get cliche poses, give your character a prop and instant instantly you've got uh, some more interesting acting because if I'm going huh like this but if I have a pencil or something in my hand I'm like huh you know it just mixes up the posing a teeny bit by giving your character a prop to work with okay so overall we got everything kind of set up let's go ahead and nail in a little bit more interesting let's do lips closed Again, like I said, with this um, rig, the only thing that we're going to have to kind of contend with is that it doesn't have as many controllers as the uh, other rig did. That Malcolm rig was real nice because it had a lot of manipulators that we could get in. Let's do mouth one. We want to still get in there and kind of get some good posing going. stuff so yeah, let's zero that out and I think we'll give him some kind of a little bit sleepier tired eyes here your eyes. And do we have ear controls at all? It'd be kind of cool if we could tilt the ears down a little bit, but it doesn't look like we do. Okay, so I think we have fairly good setup pose here. Just want to make sure that we keep them kind of balanced. And let's go ahead and save our file again. Which control S that bad boy and then we want to turn everything off except for our nerve 
curves, nerve surfaces, and our polygons. Go ahead and grab everything. Go to frame zero. And we'll go ahead and set a key there. Did we get it? There we go. Just want to lock in everything. Now, one thing I did want to do here is make sure that uh, I'm not keying that locator. So I gotta make sure we go back in and find out where that was. Okay, let's make sure we didn't uh, delete that. So we don't want to set a key on this prop. We want the prop to be keyed to that hand there, so that's okay. him down a little bit more so he'll pull back and let him scrounge down just a little bit more just kind of setting up a couple of keys here so we got let's flip from there to there and maybe we could uh, rotate those shoulders in a little little transitional thing. It's not going to be a big pose. We want to work within the pose we already have. And then I also want to push him down a little bit. Okay. And then let's go ahead set our key there, so we'll have a couple of keys. Well, actually, we'll move that back to like 18. Go ahead and delete that, take what we have at like 2 and hold that to 8. Take what we have at 16, hold that 24. Okay, let's go ahead and wash that out. Take what we have at 22. And put that at 30. Actually, put that at 10. Okay, let's go and watch that now. And then we'll go ahead and uh, rotate the head up a little bit. Take what we have at 27, delete what we have at 30. His body goes down, head tilts up a little bit. Okay, I think it's still a little too fast, so let's go into Window Animation Editor's Graph Editor. Let's play around with our timing a little bit. We're just kind of starting to nail a little bit of this blocking and everything that we got in here. So again, we just want to set our key there. We'll go ahead and set a key at 9. Delete that. Delete that key. Uh, let's 
Let's see, 72 frames to work here. Keep it nice and clean so we don't have any. Oh, we're just setting our uh, initial starting stuff here. Let's see here. So we have there. Scrunchy and then lift the head over. Now that head move. I want it to take a lot longer. So. too much, or just so it like undershoots and kind of overshoots a little bit. guy out. I want to keep everything nice and clean. here. By doing this method you do have to go in and definitely clean your curves up a little bit more. Because otherwise it just gets too... slowing out of that it goes a little bit quickly and then overshoots and then pulls back a little bit but it's still pretty good for that up and down movement so let's go ahead and watch that One second. Okay, sorry about that. Let's get back in here. So, all right, we're gonna clean this guy up, clean up those curves here. So, as you can see, the reason we're getting a little bit of jerkiness is because we've got a little bit in there. We want to clean those curves up, make sure they're nice and purty. And again, it's okay to kind of overshoot and then pull back a little bit. I'm okay with that. They don't have to be perfect just yet because we're really, this is kind of like a, a little bit of a blocking version of our shot. shoot and then come and pull back here and all right, let's go ahead and watch both of those arms 
then we'll mix up the timing and everything too once we got everything kind of working but I just want to make sure that we get these curves looking a little bit nicer You can see that's a little bit. Yeah, we didn't clean up that arm, so let's go ahead and do that. So let's get that little sag down. And then I think what I want to do is about one, two more frames of that, and about four more frames of that. So we're kind of we're still having a move and hold there. Noticing here, so we're going to need to push the uh, hips forward. too long to get to where I need it to be. So just tweak the timing a little bit. Let that translate uh, Z. Thing I do want to do here 
Let's make sure that I'm not locking off everything so quickly. So let's go ahead and grab, what do we have, like 34. Let's go ahead and set a key there. We'll push it back to like 40. So that way we still have that little bit of movement there. Fifty-four even. Still feel like that transition's a little bit harsh. shooting a little bit, so swing forward and then pull back a little bit. So let's see. Well, let's go ahead and uh, lift up the shoulders here. That's where we get into a little bit of play. So we can kind of offset some stuff because I think the main body's working there. This guy in a little bit more.
just going to undo that idea. It's just not... I'll need to do a little overshoot on those shoulders, but that's just not working, so... Some variation there. Okay, that'll work. So is that what we have there? Delete that. Delete that. So we'll raise up. Just so we can have a little variation in those hand poses there. Go ahead and delete that. So set what we have there. Delete that. Delete that. So let's go ahead and watch that. Okay, let's go ahead and hold what we have for a few more frames. Let's go ahead and clean that up then. So those are rotate Y. Again, the reason it's looking a little janky is just because we haven't cleaned up those curves. That's definitely something we want to do. And again, we're just kind of adding a little bit of balance at the end by doing that undershoot.
let's go ahead and maybe go a little bit less. So let's take 15 and delete our 18. So 15 will be our new kind of extreme here. Got some mischief going on behind me. One second. Okay. So let's clean that up. Let's see here. Scoot that foot out a little bit. And then back in. Just a little bit, so we got a little bit of play in that foot, and maybe we'll lean the hips just a teeny bit over as well. just So we get a little bit of kind of like a weight shift there too. should happen about two frames quicker uh, before it should take two frames
still hits a little bit too hard, so let's give it two more frames to get in there. here Actually, let's save our file here do a little bit more in the face and then I think we'll call it for today Keep the eyes closed for a little bit longer. Ooh, funky eyelids. Okay, come on. There we go. Tells his joke, thinks, kind of looks up. Too much of a movement in that blank one, I just hold it for a while. before that that it starts and hold it for another two frames and two frames for, for it to open and then let's go ahead and Just a little too creepy with the mouth open that much.
this is on the job too. Is that what we have there? Delete that. Take what we have at 33, have it hit at 31, and hold till 37. stuff to hit about three frames sooner. So the blink should hit first. And the eyes should go up. So I'll move that forward two frames.
I think that's a good starting point. First part of the blocking, we'll do the second part of the blocking um, tomorrow, and then we'll add our lip sync in on the next day, and then we'll polish it up. So this might be a four day. Depends on once we get the lip sync audio in here, what we feel about it. So let's take a look back at where we started um, with today. I never do a painting over again for a second time. So nail it the first time. And don't worry about looking back, always look forward and to your next shot and keep being motivated, keep being inspired. You guys are awesome, you're amazing. Thanks again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It's a little bit of a um, variation. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below what you guys think. That being said, I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for all the likes and subscribes and you guys have a lovely night and we will see you for some more animation tomorrow.